Hi, my name is Rafael Kevin Ainagal. You can call me Sir Kev. These series of video-based modules will be based on the topics under Earth and Life Science for Senior High School. Write your comments below for improvement. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Thank you. Today's topic is about the Earth's subsystem and the Earth's internal structure. The Earth's subsystems are divided into four. Um, these are the four spheres of the Earth. The solid part, which is the geosphere. The water part, which is the hydrosphere. The part where life exists, we call that as the biosphere. And finally, the part which is the gaseous uh, part of the Earth, it's the atmosphere. Let's start with the hydrosphere. Ocean is the most prominent feature of this sphere of the Earth. It's nearly 71% of the Earth's surface and it holds about 97% of the Earth's water. Uh, aside from this one, the hydrosphere also includes fresh water um, from streams, lakes, and glaciers, as well as that found in the underground. The frozen part of the hydrosphere is called the cryosphere. Now let's discuss the atmosphere. The second part, or the second sphere, is called the atmosphere. It is a thin, tenuous blanket of air that protects the Earth against the harmful rays from the sun. Our atmosphere is a delicate, life-giving blanket of air that surrounds the fragile Earth. In one way or another, it influences everything we see and hear. It is intimately connected to our lives. This chapter will discuss the Earth and its atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gases surrounding the planet. The Earth is surrounded by a blanket of air and that is actually called the atmosphere. Now what are the purpose, uh, purposes of atmosphere? First, it absorbs the energy from the sun. It protects us from high energy radiation. The atmosphere protects and supports life as well. It burns incoming meteoroids. Um, to define atmosphere, it's a gaseous envelope that comprises mostly of some gases like nitrogen and oxygen with small amounts of other gases such as water vapor and carbon dioxide. Here is the composition of today's atmosphere. As you can see, um, we have nitrogen and oxygen, which contains the bulk of, um, the, of the percentage of, of elements of, of the air. So nitrogen comprises 78%, oxygen 21%. And the third one is argon. Now it, it's closely followed by carbon dioxide and water molecules. The Earth's atmosphere is made of mixture of gases called air. So we have here nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and carbon dioxide as mentioned. Now the breathe of air is actually averaging to one liter. At sea level, there are roughly 10 to the 22nd power air molecules in the liter and 10 to the 44th power molecule in the atmosphere. Now, here are the common um, gases that we can find in the atmosphere. 
And the largest one, or the largest bulk is from the nitrogen, which is 78%. Um, it is removed from the atmosphere through the processes done by bacteria in the soil. Also, um, it is taken also by planktons um, to fortify the ocean's food chain. Well, it is returned to the atmosphere mainly through the process of decaying of plant and animal matter. Oxygen, on the other hand, is removed from the atmosphere when organic matter decays, um, when the oxygen combines with other substances, producing oxide through the process of oxidation. Taken from the atmosphere um, also during breathing, as we take in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. In addition um, to that, um, oxygen is produced by plants and other organisms with chlorophyll through the process of photosynthesis. As you can see, this is the nitrogen cycle. So mostly nitrates are recycled um, through decaying of plant matters. And as you can see, um, it is also utilized by plants and other bacterium. The oxygen cycle is the same with the cycle with carbon dioxide. So it's a combination or, or it's um, an interchange between the two. Now the third one, we have water vapor. It's actually a potent greenhouse gas. Why? Because it absorbs the outgoing radiant energy instead of releasing it to the air. Well, we actually use the, these radiant energy during um, storm and typhoon. How, and the water vapor has a role in heat energy balance. Carbon dioxide, 0.04%. Um, it enters the atmosphere mainly from the decay of vegetation, volcanic eruptions, exhalations of animal life, and also from the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. Its removal is through the process of photosynthesis, um, like um, plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. It's also a potent greenhouse gas, and as this increases in concentration, the surface temperature of the Earth also increases. Other greenhouse gases includes hydrocarbons like methane, nitrous oxide, and CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. Well, the CFCs usually um, is the culprit for the destruction of our ozone in the stratosphere. Um, the ozone is also the one that shields us, um, humans and other creatures, from the harmful ultraviolet ray from the sun. Other pollutants include nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons. Um, they are highly poisonous substances that when inhaled, it can cause um, death. Here are the layers of the atmosphere. Um, the atmosphere has four major layers. We have the thermosphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. Um, starting from the bottom, we can start with um, troposphere, followed by stratosphere and mesosphere, and lastly, the thermosphere. Taking a look at this diagram, we can see that the temperature usually is um, decreasing as we reach some parts of the atmosphere and then it also suddenly increases afterwards. These are the usual materials or things that we can find in each level of the atmosphere. Now let's start with the troposphere. It's the lowest and the thinnest layer. Of course, this is 90% of the mass of the atmosphere. Um, the temperature decreases with altitude. This is where the weather occurs. Um, the air is warmest at the bottom of the troposphere near ground level. Um, higher up, it gets colder. The boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere is called the tropopause. 
Now airplanes fly on troposphere layer. Now let's go to stratosphere. Um, this is the next layer after the troposphere. Um, UV radiation is absorbed at this level. The temperature increases with altitude. No weather occurrence at this part. So um, no air mixing also in this layer. It contains high level of ozone. Well, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, ozone layer is the one protecting us from ultraviolet ray from the sun. Um, the upper boundary is called the stratopause. Um, the temperature, which changed slowly in stratosphere, is also um, stopping to change here. Okay. Air balloons can go up to stratosphere layer. Okay. Let's go to the coldest part of the atmosphere, the mesosphere. Um, usually, meteoroids get burn in this layer. Um, it's around negative 100 degrees centigrade. The temperature decreases as altitude increases. The boundary between the mesosphere and the next upper layer is called the mesopause. Now let's have the next one which is the thermosphere. Above the mesosphere, um, the thermosphere can be found. Um, it's usually extends to almost 500 kilometers in high. Um, this is the hottest layer. The temperature increases with altitude. The upper atmosphere uh, or thermosphere is called the ionosphere. Um, it extends from 80 to 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The ionosphere absorb radiation from the sun and become electrically charged. Electrically charged particles are called ions, hence the name ionosphere. This one readily absorbs solar radiation. The temperature can go as high as 1,500 degrees centigrade. The good thing is it reflects radio waves. This is the reason why we can um, hear signals from radios um, at this level and we can hear it in Earth. International Space Station are present in this layer too because of that ability. These are the things that we can find in the thermosphere layer. Now, what about auroras? Well, we have two forms of auroras. We have aurora borealis and aurora australis. Um, an aurora is a natural light display in the sky, usually of greenish color but sometimes red or blue. This phenomena usually occurs in areas known as the auroral zone near the North Pole and the South Pole. Aurora is caused by the collision of energetically charged particles with atoms in high altitude thermosphere within our atmosphere. The sun contains particles which gets pulled into the Earth's magnetic pole fields. As they accelerate towards the Earth, collision occur between these ion particles and nitrogen and oxygen atoms in our atmosphere, releasing energy in the form of amazing aurora lights. Now, to have a summary, these are the layers of the atmosphere, from the troposphere to stratosphere to mesosphere, and lastly, the thermosphere. Some um, scientists would actually include exosphere as the last part after the thermosphere. So to discuss, um, the four layers of the atmosphere include the troposphere where we live, the stratosphere is the one that contains the ozone layer, the mesosphere is where the meteors burn, that's the coldest part, and lastly the thermosphere is where our satellites orbit the Earth, this is the hottest part. The next part of the Earth's sphere is the biosphere. This part of uh, the Earth's major um, sphere includes all life form. Usually it's at the surface in a zone that extends from the ocean floor upward for several kilometers into the atmosphere. And finally, we have the last sphere the geosphere. From the word geo, it means rock. So this is the solid part of the earth. 
based on compositional differences, it is consists of the three major layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The core is further divided into two major sublayers, the outer and the inner core. As we go along into the deepest portion of the Earth's solid part, it, the heat or the temperature is increasing. So the thin and the rocky outer layer of the Earth, the thinnest part is the crust, followed by the mantle where most of the activities underground are occurring. And finally, the core. So take a look at the layered structure of the geosphere. Finally, to summarize the four spheres of the Earth, we have the atmosphere, where um, we usually have all the gaseous part of the Earth. The geosphere, which has all the solid part. The hydrosphere, which contains the liquid part, and the biosphere, where life exists. We have discussed a system, the Earth system to be precise. So what is a system? It is any size or group of interacting parts that form a complex whole. So it can either be a closed system, like the automobile cooling system, when you are inside a car, um, you have the air conditioner. We also have open systems, which allow both energy and matter to flow in and out of the system. An example is the reverse system. Now, Earth as a system, because its dynamic body have separated with, but also interact with other parts of its other spheres. The Earth system science studies Earth as a system that is composed of numerous parts or subsystems. So what are the major sources of the energy of the Earth? First, the radiant energy from the sun. Second, the, um, the Earth's interior, which drives internal processes, which includes um, volcanic formation and transformation, as well as the tectonics from earthquakes, as well as the building of mountains. It is also consists of a nearly endless array of other subsystems. Humans are part of the Earth system. What are the purpose of the people in the environment? Well, the environment surrounds and influences all organisms. The physical environment includes the water, air, soil, and rock. And the term environmental is usually reserved for those aspects that focus on the relationships between people and the natural environment. So where can we find the resources? Well, um, from the physical environment. Um, the resources can either be renewable or non-renewable. As you can see, the population of the planet is growing rapidly. And in that process, the resources are also declining. Um, with the rapid growth of population, their natural resources are also declining. So that is why we as humans should ensure that the supply and demand of food and other resources should be balanced. Thank you. Thank you.